Good morning. Welcome to the Humanist Community in Silicon Valley's Sunday Forum. My name is Matt Courtney. I'm the recorder and a member of the board of the Humanist Community. The Humanist Community is a chapter of the American Humanist Association. Humanism is a reality-based philosophy of life that affirms our ability and responsibility to leave eth ethical lives of personal fulfillment that aspire to the greater good. We value freedom, health, happiness, fairness, compassion, and using science and reason to acquire and apply knowledge. If these words describe your thinking, we invite you to become a member of the humanist community if you have not already done so. Membership forms are available on our website at humanists.org. That's humanists, plural, dot org. If you're listening for the first time, welcome, and we invite you to continue listening to our weekly forums and other events. You can find all our events listed on our website. Again, that's humanists.org. Please aid us in continuing to present these forums by donating to the humanist community. You can find out how to donate to our organization on our website at humanists.org. Also, Greg has posted the address if you want to mail a check to our organization. He's posted it in the chat on Zoom. Our forum today will be on the topic... Return to Ecuador, a summer of community service in my birth country, and will be presented by Lucas Danny. Hope that is correct. So let me unmute Lucas. There you go, Lucas. Oh, um, all right. I'm going to share my screen if that's fine. Go um, for it. There we go. Okay. So, uh, my name is Lucas Daney, and uh, and last summer I went to um, Ecuador uh, with a program called Amigos, um, and uh, it was really a uh, really fun experience. And I, you know, it was just really great to visit the place where I was born uh, again. Uh, so yeah, um, okay, so. The reason I did Amigos was because, uh, obviously, I wanted to return to the country where I was born, um, because when my parents adopted me when I was one years old from Ecuador, um, I never, we never like were, came back. So this is an opportunity for me to visit the country in which I was born. Um, so that was really special. And also, my sisters went uh, with the same program, Amigos to uh, countries in South America. And when they came back, they were really happy and they were, you know, telling us stories about, you know, all, how, how much fun they had. Uh, so I wanted to try it out for myself and um, go to the country where I was born. So uh, it turned out to be such a great experience too, so. Okay, so Amigos is the program in which uh, I went to Ecuador, and they're like a nonprofit organization in which they bring teenagers to South America, and the teenagers volunteer at the small communities, uh, and they help like with a small project, right? The projects can be like anything, like uh, some people like pave some place that wasn't paved before, or um, they like my sister, I think, painted a church or something, but. Um, yeah, so there's like a variety of projects, but they all to like support the small communities in the whatever, whichever country you go to. And, uh, you know, it's a great experience. It's not only do you like live in a community in the country, but you also get to help out that community uh, by doing like, you know, kind of community service, you know, it's really great. All right, so for like six months before I left Ecuador, uh, I went through a bunch of training with my chapter and that picture is actually my chapter. Those are all the volunteers from around Silicon Valley. And, um, you know, um, so yeah, we got to, we were like uh, trained on how to like, uh, you know, interact with like kids, younger kids. That was one of the big focuses because when we were in community in the country, uh, we ha had to run educational camps for the children or youth of the, um, uh, of the community. So that was um, really fun. Uh, and, you know, our entire chapter became like really close friends, uh, you know, and yeah, 
and we were, you know, in the communities. Uh, we also learned from what we were able to, you know, bring the skills we brought from training to the communities, right? And, you know, we had a ton of fun there. I, um, what is it? So when we actually got to Ecuador, we were put through briefing, and um, uh, the, they were like the first five days in Ecuador, right? I spent six weeks there. And um, this was additional training, kind of specialized to Ecuador or wherever we were going, which is the province of, Equ of Chimborazo in Ecuador, right? In the briefing, I got to meet all the people who were going to be in communities in the province of Chimborazo in Ecuador. And it was really fun. We made a ton of friends. And uh, by the end of briefing, uh, we were put in our routes. And each route had one supervisor that like, kind of took care of the entire route. And each route had like different communities uh, in which like the volunteers went into, right? And each community could have could have either two or three participants in that community. Um, so yeah, and um, you know, I became really close friends with the people there, and it was like really great. You know, that's a picture of um, us like like in the middle. This was during midterm, I think. Uh, but yeah, we, as you can see, we really became really nice, good friends by the end of it. Um, so uh, in community, I had a partner called, uh, named Ethan, uh, and we were assigned to a small community uh, uh, called Atapo Kiyotoro. Um, and this was a really nice community, right? They, you know, it's a community of like 400 people. So everybody knew each other and, you know, so, we got there and we were assigned a host family. Uh, or, and yeah, so when we went there, um, we planned a bunch of educational classes for the kids in the community. Um, and each day we would, you know, go down to the school and um, teach a class um, on, you know, an educational class to the kids. And then we would go and have lunch with our host family. And then we'd come back to the school and by that like all the kids were out of school and they would just love like playing soccer or cards with us right and we usually played a lot of soccer but when it was raining which it rained a ton there uh we would go inside like one of the classrooms that the school set apart for us and uh play uh cards there you know and you know i got to know all the kids there it was really really fun to you know see them they were all really nice and you know interested in what you know things how were things were back in the u.s right and then i would like ask them they would like show me different parts of the school and like tell tell us stories about it it was really great you know and then one other thing about my community was that it was kind of a valley community so like the school was at the center of the community and that was like down in a valley and then everybody else lived like kind of in a fan out from that. So people would live like at the top of a hill and then you would have to walk all the way down to go to, um, to go to the school, right? And my host, uh, my first host family had, they lived at the very, very top of the hill. And then we would have to walk down. It was like a mile or so. It was just really, really interesting. So, you know, it was, I got a lot of exercise while doing it, but um, yeah. All right, so for our project in community, we, um, we had a bit of a hard time uh, in the beginning. Uh, when we got there, we asked the, um, you know, we asked a, a kind of a board of people that they were having a meeting like in the school, and we asked them what they wanted. And then at first they wanted to, you know, pave the, um, pave the, the school or something, right? Like there was a dirt patch and they wanted to pave it. And then, for some reason, that idea fell through. But, um, you know, but, and then after we had a ton of, like, meetings with the president of the community and stuff, and uh, we finally came to the conclusion that we were going to uh, put the $400 that we had as budget and put it towards a community bank um, that um, the community uh, had already established, but it was just adding funds to it. And then we were, uh, so that they could, like, people in the community could come in and take out loans um, with like less interest, right? Right, Because the, the banks in like Quito, 
or the big towns had a bunch of you know high interests, so you wouldn't have to do that. Uh, they wouldn't have to do that in, in this case, right? But yeah, and also one of the biggest obstacles for us was that um, the, in Ecuador, they all look a majority of people speak the language of Quechua, which is um, it's their native native language, right? And so it was kind of hard to uh, you know. Uh, sometimes communicate with the people because it was kind of a language barrier. Even though we knew Spanish, um, they like they would only know part of Spanish, right? And then the rest they would know Quechua. So, um, but eventually, we after many meetings, right? We finally got um, the plant, uh, the project done, and we were really proud of it. And then the entire community was really thankful uh, for the contribution. All right. Uh, my host family, um, I actually had two host families uh, during uh, my visit. Um, my partner, Ethan, and I, uh, during the first half, we had a, a, a single mother who was, um, who like took care of us uh, for the first half before midterm, which was like two weeks in. And then, um, you know, uh, she, by, the, by midterm, she said, oh, she couldn't really take care of us anymore. Um, so we had to move to a different family. But uh, in spite of that, she was really nice. And she, you know, she, the food there was really great. She cooked some really, really good food. So that's one of my favorite memories there. Was she, uh, by the end of it, she was, like, teaching us how to cook, like, empanadas and stuff. And it was really fun. Um, but our second host family, um, they're, her, they're Parents weren't around as much either, but um, the, our host brothers actually were always around. So, um, and they were both like 12 and 14, but they still like were able to take care of like the entire, like, the entire house's farm, you know, and like our host family had like a herd of sheep. They had some cows and they had like, some pigs too, right? And um, yeah, and our host brothers would like, they would wake us up really early and be like, hey, let's go, you know, feed the cows or like, let's go, you know, take care of the pig. Um, so, yeah, they were really fun. And then there were also uh, some of the kids who were in our campamentos, or that's the educational camps that we had for the kids. So we kind of already knew them. And it was really um, fun. So, yeah, um, they also had a family donkey, which uh, they let us ride. And... It was a funny story. Um, the family donkey actually ran away, like towards the end of our visit, it ran away and we saw it run away, like ran away down a hill, like near the edge of a cliff. And um, they, uh, when we saw it run away from like school, we saw it like on the other, on like the, like, the top of the mountain, we saw the, um, the, that the donkey had run away and everybody said, oh no, the donkey ran away. So we all like ran up the hill or right we all ran back home and tried to we had to chase the donkey and you know finally get it you know tame and then for some reason to make it like so it wouldn't run away we had to have someone like ride the donkey back to the home right and then the other people would lead it um so i got to ride the donkey up this really steep hill which was terrifying and really fun at the same time but, you know it was just one of the fun things i had to do with my host brothers and i was a really great experience to you know you know be able to do that with that so okay so the end of the visit was like um it was pretty sad for both me and my partner like by the end of this whole community right uh by the end of like this our whole visit we had really gotten to know everyone in our community and you know we would like our host parents had taught us how to wash our clothes right like obviously there wasn't um, like a British uh I mean a, clothes washing machine, right? So they taught us how to like, like, you know, give it water, put soap on, and then just kind of like work or the dirt out of the fabric and stuff like that. So like we had a really close like bond with our family. So it was really sad. So, uh, and also with the kids in the community, we had like almost every single day, we'd go down and play like um, soccer with them. We'd play, you know, cards or we'd like, you know, like fun games or like duck duck goose or stuff like that and um so they all had like you know they were all really sad to see us go so you know we said goodbye to them though it was really sad 
Um, but yeah, and then we brought our host family actually to uh, a big goodbye event set by like the Amigos organization, right? All the families that had hosted, you know, participant were invited to this huge um, goodbye party. And um, they, in that case, um, so they came with us to Guamote, which is a nearby, like, pretty, it's a pretty big town. And uh, we had a huge goodbye party there. And then after that, um, we said, uh, you know, goodbye to our families. And then they went back to their community. And then we stayed there for debriefing, right? So, but yeah, it was really, I'm really thankful of the family because it was, uh, it was really fun. It was really nice of them to take us in, right? Um, you know, it was absolutely amazing. Um, so for debriefing, um, so everybody was like really sad, as you could tell, uh, because of, you know, they all had to say goodbye to their families and stuff. And um, so we, we had a, took a bus to like a different town where we were like set to have our debriefing. And, um, you know, we, um, uh, and, you know, we had our, we were supposed to be talked about like our projects to our supervisors and, you know, what we could have done better or and what went wrong or like, what did we do well, you know, kind of a big reflection on our entire trip, right. Which took like about a day. But then after that, the supervisors had like a ton of fun activities planned for us, you know, to kind of like say, oh, goodbye, Ecuador, right? Um, so uh, on our, our like second day uh, of debriefing, uh, we went up the volcano, Cal Mount Chimborazo, I think. Uh, we went up as, high, as, high, as high as up as you could go without using oxygen equipment, which was really high and it was really cool because like, you know, it was really hard to breathe since the air was so thin and stuff like that. But yeah, that was really fun. And then the day before we left, we uh, uh, also went to the equator, which is, that's the monument you see at the equator, uh, which was this huge, like, you know, it was a huge deal, but it was really fun. Um, I don't know. And then um, after that, we went uh, home. Like, we flew out of Quito, like, really late at night, and we landed in Houston. Uh, and I, that, that's where we said goodbye to all the volunteers because the volunteers weren't just from Silicon Valley. They were from, like, everywhere uh, in the United States. There were some from, like, New York, right? Uh, like, uh, there were some who lived in Houston. There were some people who lived, like, Kansas, right? And then there were some people who lived in the Bay, Bay Area, right? So, like, we all said our goodbyes there and, you know, at the airport because we had all had different flights and we're flying out of different, uh, you know, terminals and stuff like that so yeah but yeah it was really fun to share those experiences with not only our volunteers but our families and people in the community so i'm you know i'm extremely happy that um um that i was able to go on this trip you know i was able to experience um you know ecuadorian culture you know firsthand uh you know i was able to like cook some of their food, right? I was taught how to cook some of their food. I was, you know, I helped like, feed the cows. I heard, heard the cows uh, and um, like the sheep. And then like, you know, I helped like plant a bunch of grass for the cows to eat. Like, and that was like really fun to do. So I think it was a huge privilege to be able to go back to the country where I was born. And, you know, it was extremely fun. And I like, I'm so happy that I was able to do it because, you know, I, I had a bunch, I, you know, I was able to meet a bunch of new people and uh, got a lot of friends there. Um, so, and I was able, I'm glad I'm able, I was able to help the community out, right, or, you know, with the, our project that we did. Uh, so, yeah, I'm very thankful also to my parents who let me uh, go on this trip, yeah. And for all those people who supported me, I'm also very thankful. Um, but yeah, um, and I also have to give a big thanks to the human community because uh, without all those presentations that I gave in the family program, I probably wouldn't have been able to like stand up in front of the president of the community and like 
you know, help them come up with an idea that's helped their, you know, to support the community, right, with the plan about the, um, the community bank. So, you know, I want to thank the Humans community for that. So, yeah, thank you. And that's a picture of me and the kids riding a bicycle, and that's me wearing a hat that I found in the store. So, yeah, that's it. Okay, so that's all you got? Yep. We'll have uh, sure. questions, yeah. Everybody's clapping, but they're all on mute. So. Yeah. <laughs> but if we have any questions, go ahead and raise your hand in the Zoom meeting. Let me check. Hi, so uh, we enjoyed the talk, Lucas, and we had uh, several questions. Uh, first off, what was your specific project or what projects did you work on while you were down there? And well, did, you I, get, did you get to visit the place you were born or, or meet your birth parents? Uh, I'll address the second one first, but um, I didn't know. So I was uh, assigned to the uh, a province of Chimborazo, which isn't the province in which I was born, right? And we were like, we didn't really leave that province ever. So I, no, I wasn't able to really, you know, meet my parents or, least, or my, my real parents who I don't really know who they are, right? But, um, um, I was able to, you know, experience the culture of, uh, of the people in Ecuador, and which I think was, you know, almost as close as I'm going to get to, you know, meeting my parents. And so, yeah. Um, and then the first question was, uh, my project was uh, funding a community bank, right? Um, I was uh, funded a community bank. Um, I, we put um, $400 in their bank, and... Uh, so that they could have more money to, you know, lend out to people who needed money, and then so people could like put bank uh, to put money in the bank, right? So that was um, really fun. All right, we have uh, Alex and Senna. Uh, maybe probably muted yourself. Apparently, I did. Yeah. Um, okay. A couple of things. One is, did you did you get to learn any Quechua? I, I, I that fascinated me because I think that was that was the language of the Inca Empire, and I'm just wondering if you picked up any of it. Oh, um, so before I left, I actually took a few um, Quechua lessons from a very nice woman who uh, actually lived all the way in San Francisco. Uh, so I was able to learn a little bit there. Uh, through my teacher before I left, but then, um, and that really impressed actually the people in Ecuador, uh, because they were like, oh, wow, they, he actually knows a little bit of Quechua, right? Um, and, you know, I was, they were really like, you know, they really appreciated that I tried to learn their language, right? And then obviously they would, they would laugh whenever I messed something up, right? But like, um, yeah, and then they tried to teach me uh, a little bit too, right? So, you know, I did learn a little bit but not like not to really string a sentence together so no. so can you can you say something in Kichwa just to give us a feel for it um it sounds like uh ishmanaya gange is uh i think it's high so that you know oh okay. that's it's a greeting yeah yeah and then um i know dog is ashku yeah and then, um, you know, I'm pretty sure that's um, trying to think of other things I could say. I, I, I assume you, you probably had a lot of Spanish, too. Yeah, yeah. I, um, you know, I'm fluent in Spanish, so, and my partner was, knew some Spanish, so we, that's like, we didn't really talk much English in community. It was basically almost like 100% Spanish. Did, was there, there much a difference? I mean, I mean, was the Spanish they spoke there pretty much what you learned in school, or was it like, you know, like London slang or something, something that, that you had to you had to adjust to? Uh, um, yeah, um, they had, you know, it's kind of with every place you go, they have their own like, you know, a adaptation of language. So. But they're, you know, it was for the, the basics of Spanish were basically the same, right? Of course, they, um, uh, there were other words that, like, they, instead of, 
uh, like one word, they would say a different word, and then we just got, you know, used to that. Um, so yeah, they, and some of them, they would just like interchange uh, dog for like the word Ashku and uh, Quichua, right? So they wouldn't never actually say the words in Spanish, they would just call it the, the, what it was called in, in uh, Quichua, right? So that happened with a lot of, um, that, that's what they do for a lot of things, like they would say achachai when it was cool, right? Right, and that's not like it's not saying like oh it's cold in Spanish. It's saying oh it's it's really cold in Quechua, right? So, wow. you know that's what they did. But you know it was really fun. We got used to it and we got to learn a lot of it. So yeah, I was also wondering about uh, who financed this. Did, did the the organization Amigos? Did you did you have to pay your own way? Uh, well, yeah. Um, I the Amigos. Um, no, they. Well, I mean they pay for um, um, some of it, but then also a lot of people, uh, you know, uh, you know, supported me by, with donations, like um, you guys did, I'm pretty sure, and, and, you know, my parents paid for a lot of it too. So um, it was, um, but it was, yeah, that's why I'm really thankful to all those people who donated, like a bunch of my relatives donated, like family, friends, so, yeah. That I paid for like my trip there, and then like for any like medical stuff. So uh, before we we move on, uh, in the uh, chat, I have a question from Scott asking uh, how you say or how do you say the donkey ran away? I think it's a joke. But <laughs> no, uh, I I don't know. I, that's <laughs> but yeah. It, there's also a question of whether or not uh, Quechua is related to or another name for Quechua, I, Quechua but spelled with a Q. I, I don't know if you can see the chat. Yeah, I can. Um, um, I'm pretty sure they are. They might be. The, I'm pretty sure they're like very closely related to each other. They might like interchange some words, right? But they might be just from different regions of Ecuador. That's why I think I remember my teacher saying something about that. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure they're like basically the same. They just interchange some things, right? It's a different form. Of the you know, Quechua is a different um, Quechua is a different form of Quechua, right? And vice versa, right? So. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, Dana. Okay, I'm having trouble. Oh, there we go. Then muted now. Uh, uh, I don't think so. Can you hear us? Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. I. I wondered what was the best part about living with the family. Was it the experience of living on a farm and kind of going back in time to an earlier way of life that we don't have here very much anymore? And, you know, working with the animals and, and what was the most interesting and fun thing for you about living on the farm with these people? Okay. Uh I think it's to say the fa my favorite part, uh, you know, my most interesting part was uh, helping my host brothers, you know, with their chores on the farm. You know, it's something like, you know, you don't really think about, right, about someone really doing that kind of farm. Like, right, you don't really know, oh, like the milk, you know, to like, in the, you just like buy a jug of milk at the store, right? But no, like you have to, you get to see, like, I helped our host brothers, like, you know, milk a cow and, you know, take care of the cow, make sure it gets fed, right? And, um, you know, so that was really, you know, great to do. I always had to do all these, like, chores, you know. Um, we also had guinea pigs. Um, they also had, like, a guinea pig farm. Uh, and, you know, they take care of the uh, guinea pigs, right? Obviously, they ate on the butt. Um, <laughs> yeah. So did you actually learn to milk the cow? Yeah, yeah, we did. They taught us how. <laughs> Are you done? Yeah. We're done. We're done. Okay. I don't see anybody else with their hands up. Does anybody else have questions? I see Scott has his hand up, but he's not putting it up in Zoom. Do you not, have, how, not know how to do that, Scott? Here. I can't. There we go. 
Go to Scott. Oh, why don't you hear about the uh, the okay. tour again? You said that you would go on a tour. I didn't quite catch that part. Was it like um, you know Abraham Lincoln was a country lawyer and he would travel around? Did you visit different places, like for your host family? Oh uh, no, not really. I mean, we basically stayed in community. We didn't really go around. We just by staying with our host family, we kind of just they like you know. We slept and ate there, right? And then they would, like, you know, help us with, like, anything we needed, um, right? And then we'd go out and help the community with the project. So, but we didn't really, we, I don't think, we, we weren't even allowed to go out of our community. Uh, it was just, you know, kind of stay there. So. Thank you. Okay, I have Senna and Alex. You're going to have to unmute yourself because it looks like you muted yourself last. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I try to unmute myself when you have control and I muted myself. Okay, um, I was wondering about your sisters. Uh, did they go to Ecuador or other countries? Uh, they actually went to, uh, Isabel went to Paraguay and Miguela went to Nicaragua, right? Um, but both those programs actually shut um, down. They don't, Amigos doesn't take people there anymore. Not quite sure why, but, uh, but like, um, but yeah, that, that's where they went, and they had a ton of fun going there. Uh -huh. uh, so that's why that's one of the main reasons. So, like, besides just me being born in Ecuador, that was one of the main reasons is that they had a lot of fun. Um, you going with amigos there, so I was like, oh, this would be a great experience for me too. So, so what are your plans for the future? Um, well. Um, I really want to go back, obviously. Um, um, you know, try to go see how the community is, to, you know, see what they've been doing. Um, obviously, I'm able to, you know, a few of them had cell phones. Uh, not very many, though. Like, just one or two people had cell phones. So I'm able to, you know, communicate a little bit with them. Uh, but, like, not very often. But, um, so I definitely want to go back again. I'm not sure, I'm exactly sure when, you know, like, schedule up ahead is getting really chaotic as I'm getting ready to go to college and stuff. So, um, but I definitely do want to go back. Uh, and yeah. So where are you going to college and what are you going to take? And where do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, um, I, I'm a, so I've like, I'm not even, haven't even applied to colleges, but you know, that's what my big next, next big step is to start applying to colleges. And, uh, but I really want to go to this college called Purdue in Indiana. Um, and, um, you know, I want to uh, study there to become a uh, professional pilot, you know, that, you know, uh, airline pilot, you know, so, yeah. One more thing. What do you miss most? The food, riding a donkey, climbing hills until you can't, the air is too thin to breathe? Right. What do I what most? Do you miss most? Oh, um, besides uh, your friends. Oh, um, probably, well, probably the climate there was really nice. Even though it rained a lot, it was really nice there, right? And then, obviously, like, the farm life was really fun to be able to live that. Even though, like, you know, it was just, you know, it was something special. And, uh, you know, I really miss that part of it, so. Thank you. Okay, Carl, you're going to have to unmute yourself. Cause, there we go. Yeah. Most would like you to unmute. Yeah, I was just curious. Uh, a lot of the speakers, when they travel, they, they show a map and kind of show exactly where they were. Just wondering, where roughly were you in, 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 uh, in well, I'm not forgotten, forgotten which country you went to. I got, I got a mental block on it. Ecuador. Yeah. And, and uh, I, I noticed it's, there's a large percentage of the country is is mountainous so when we are on the east west north south northeast whatever where were you located uh yeah we were um in the province of chimborazo which is um i'm pretty sure that's on the west side of um uh, of ecuador and we were we were actually in the andes which is that's the mountain range that goes through um Ecuador, right? Uh, so, and that's like 
that's where like you know Chimborazo I'm pretty sure is part of um, the mountain range and um, so yeah we were in those, those mountains our community was in those mountains so yeah and that's where we stayed yeah I, I couldn't I see a map but I, I couldn't see um, the cut maybe I can't I don't know how to translate it but I couldn't see the particular places you mentioned on this gross map that I'm looking at um, there's a I'm not sure if you can find this city or it's a small town called Palmira um, in the province of Chimborazo I might be able to that that's like the closest you can get on Google Maps to our community um, uh, but yeah that Palmira is like the town that you went through to get to all the communities and that's like where most of our um, that's uh, where most of our families went to get like food you know th there was a small like market there and stuff so. Great, thank you. Yep. Okay, Paul. Uh, anything that you're going to learn to fly in uh, Lafayette or West Lafayette, that's where I learned to fly. Uh, good place. Uh, will you, are you able now? You talked a bit, a bit about phone contact. Are there other ways? Do they have Wi-Fi there so you can communicate that way? Um, no, they don't really have um, Wi-Fi there. They do. I mean, they do have this. Like when they have a phone, they have this. They buy cards that have minutes on them, right? And they like lug them. They put the minutes on their phone, and then they have like that amount of like texts or whatever minutes on their phone. To, like, I guess not. I guess my qu my first question should have been: Do they have electricity in the village? Yeah, um, they do. Like they do have. It's not like you know they don't have like a ton of electricity. Like you know we have in our home, they have like maybe a light one one or two light bulbs in their house, right? Average, right? Just enough to like you know they don't really have like they have they don't have they have I think they have gas stoves. You know they buy a a truck comes by with like propane or you know and then but it's not like electric stove or anything it's um like that you know so yeah not much electricity at all but um you know just enough to like light the house yeah okay uh dana again uh but you've muted yourself so yeah, okay. Go. Yeah, I wanted to ask if they had any baby pigs when you were there. Oh my God, that was a huge. Part. Okay, so I forgot about that for a <laughs> second. I don't know how I forgot. So yes, one of the pigs actually gave like birth to like five pig baby pigs, uh -huh. and they were they were so adorable. And you know, that's our host man, mom took care of them. Uh, they were the actually. Mother, did the mother feed them? Um, yes. Yeah, there was, yeah. It did. Because I lived with a family in Mexico for about four years, and um, we had a lot of times the, the sows would have too many piglets, and we'd have to feed them on a little baby bottle because <laughs> the sow couldn't feed all of them. And that they are really fun, aren't they? They're yeah. just adorable. Yeah. Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, I, I got a question. I'm interested in political issues, and I was wondering if you learned something about the uh, what you might have learned about the politics in Ecuador, because not long ago, they had their first indigenous president, and they now have a new administration, and I, I'm not sure how that administration changed, but I was just wondering what you might have learned from the politics there. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Our community was kind of more isolated from you know the large um you know we weren't like in keto or anything so like we kind of had their own little form of government there right obviously like there was a the, the president right treasurer and stuff like that and then a board of uh you know a bunch of people so um i don't know i don't really didn't really get that much of a sense as, as to how you know Ecuador as a whole was doing but yeah so they didn't talk about Quito very much. Um, no, that was just a, a few of their relatives lived there, but yeah. uh, that's all I really know. 
Okay, that's that's fine. I'm not surprised. Thank you. Yeah, no We're done. Okay. Uh, before I move on to the two others who have their hands up uh, from the chat, Greg asks if uh, there's any distinctive food or an unusual wildlife you encountered while you were there. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, the main thing was guinea pig. You eat guinea pig there, which my sisters actually had guinea pigs as pets here, so it was kind of a big, you know, thing. Uh, right. And in terms of wildlife. You know, it was just kind of, it was pretty normal as to, you know, right. Of course, it was like, there was a lot of farms there, right? So there weren't as many trees, but, uh, you know, so quite a lot of wildlife. Okay. I'm going back to Laura and Mark. Uh, we'll say it's Mark. Uh, yeah, you're unmuted. Uh, so, Lucas, uh, one more question. I happen to notice a David Daney in the participants list. Is that one of the parents that you thanked for allowing you to go? And if so, how much convincing did it take to get your parents to allow you to do this trip? Um, yeah, that's my dad, actually. Um, so, um, it actually didn't take many convincing at all. It was actually uh, them who proposed that I go, right? Um, I didn't really know, I, I mean, I know my sisters went to, you know, to Paraguay and uh, Nicaragua, but I didn't really know that Amigos went to Ecuador specifically, right? And so they kind of looked into it, like, after my sisters went, I think, and then they were like, wow, this place that like, goes to Ecuador, right? And then they're like, hey, this uh, Amigos, they go to Ecuador, and, you know, that's the place where you were born. And they asked me, it's like, do you want to do it? I was like, oh, yeah, of course I want to do it, you know? So, yeah. That's, it was kind of, you know, they said, do you want to do it? And I was like, yeah, sure. And no, it didn't really take much convincing at all, obviously. So it's kind of them who proposed the idea. Okay. Uh, Alex and Senna, and it looks like you muted yourself again. So there you go. Now, how much would it cost to participate in this program? How much did you have to raise and where did the rest of it come from? Um, let's see. Um, I mean, it depends. Like, um, if you like need a uh, bit of money, that I think Amigos Amigos has a financial aid program that you can apply for, right? So it depends on, uh, you know, depends. I think on your income, but um, it costs around like I'm not sure. I think it's like seven thousand dollars. Okay, $5,000, my dad says. So, um, yeah. And then, you know, obviously, not all of it came from my parents. Uh, a lot of it was, was donated from a bunch of really nice people and, you know, family, friends, and stuff like that. So, I, what? Whoops. Oh. <laughs> Hold on, Alex. I, I thought you were done, so I muted you, and I got to find you again in the, the list. There you are. And it won't unmute. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that, Alex. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to mention I, I, quite a long time ago, I had the opportunity to visit a friend in Idaho, who's farming country, and the, the highlight, as far as I can remember, was rounding up the piglets. That was, that was a hell of a lot of fun. They are squirmy little creatures. Yeah. And that's all yeah. I've got to say. Really. Yeah, okay. I was... Now I'm going to be... <laughs> okay. well, yeah, rounding... Yeah, you know, the wildlife... I mean, the fun life there was really fun. You know, rounding up the sheep was also really fun, right? And then our, uh, our host dog actually helped with that, except he wasn't that great at herding sheep. He was just, you know, there... But he would like bark at the sheep and then, the, but like not really do that much to hurt him. But you know, at least he tried. So, <laughs> hey, Dana, and again, you have to meet yourself. Oh, yeah, it's Jerry. Okay. It, it, this time it's me. This time it's me. Um, when you on that wildlife question, I was wondering 
if you had seen any Coati Mondays, because I heard they're supposed to be somewhere in South America. I don't know where. I don't think so. No, we didn't see no. any. We did see some, I forget what type of animal it was. It kind of, but it was like some animal near uh, the, the, the Chimborazo. Um, uh, we call it the volcano. Some animal that lives like right there. It's like a big thing. There, um, like some, some, it looks like kind of like a deer. It crossed between a oh. deer and a llama. So I don't know. That, I've heard that I've heard the Kawadi Monday is uh, like sort of a relative of a raccoon. So yeah, no, so. I don't think so. Okay, I'm done. Okay. Um, I don't see any other hand. Oh, there we go. Alex and Senna. Uh, you have to unmute yourself again. Hey. There you go. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to say, if I could say a word uh, from the humorous community, we're all very proud of you. And uh, <clears throat> you and your parents were uh, a wonderful uh, part of it while you were with us in the Sunday school. And um, so that's what I've got to say. I didn't want you to leave without uh, expressing our our gratitude and appreciation for, for you and your family. And our pride. <laughs> and our what? Pride. And our pride in you, yes. Yes, we have that. You see what a fine young man you, you have grown to be. And we, we had a tiny part in that for several years. Yeah, All right. thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Hey, uh, Paul. Uh, I'm curious about these guinea pigs that are raised for food. Uh, are those like the ones we have around here? Are they much larger? How the heck do you? Uh, I can't imagine there's very much meat on a guinea pig. Um, they're identical to the ones that we have around here. So that was really, you know, it was weird eating them, right? And we saw them kind of kill one and, you know, cook it. So, you know, but, um, you know, they taste a lot more gamey than you would think, right? Um, but yeah, it was, you know, they, it was kind of weird because they were just like, if you were just to bring a, uh, one of the guinea pigs from there and bring it here and be like, here, it's a pet, you wouldn't notice the difference, right? You wouldn't think you could tell that it wasn't brought from Petco or something. So, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, I don't, nobody else has their hand up. I think I'll go ahead and move on to open discussion. Uh, I, okay, I allowed everybody to unmute themselves. It's open dis discussion. So, Dana, you just ask your question. It's fine. And unmute yourself. You need to unmute yourself, Dana. <laughs> uh, how about grasshoppers? Do they eat grasshoppers? No, not where not where I was. Don't think they eat grasshoppers. I didn't see anybody eat a grasshopper. So. Uh, okay. they have, do they have grasshoppers? Of course, yeah. they have grasshoppers. Oh, yeah. Because they eat those in Mexico on on little pizzas, like. So I wondered if they, yeah, kind of a challenge. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite food? Um, definitely they had. Well, obviously, they grew potatoes there. Right, so um, my favorite food was they would have rice, and then they would there would be a bowl of rice, and then they would kind of make fried potatoes, right, and then they would put a fried egg on top, and that was really good. So, yeah, that sounds kind of heavy on the starch. I was uh, when when um, um, Jerry was asking about the political situation. I was kind of wondering. Um, when they vote, is that, I assume they vote in the national elections also, and paper ballots that are collected and carried off to, uh, to Quito or somewhere? Do you know how, that, how that's done? I don't really know. My assumption would probably be they'd go to Guamote, 
in Vote, um, which is a nearby town. So, Is the program nationwide here so that uh, young people from all around the country can uh, participate in it or apply to it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, that's why there are a bunch of there was a bunch of volunteers from everywhere around the country that were going to Ecuador too. So yeah, like my partner, he's actually from Kansas. So yeah. What what is the age range of participants? Um, it's, I think it's like 16 to 21, so. That much. Did you uh, hear any interesting stories when you, when you got back to the States from the other people in the, uh, in the project who have gone to other countries? Um, one, uh, one, well, the only, like, really interesting story or like the big story that kind of came up was that one route, like, you know, a route is like a group of about 12 people. They all got like in really big trouble and they were almost sent home from their community. That's like the only really big thing I heard. Everybody else had a really great time, but like that one route in, it was a different province in Ecuador. They got in huge trouble and they were almost sent home, but then they like weren't. So that was the biggest news really. I wonder what they did. What kind of trouble? <laughs> Sorry, what? Just as well, we don't know what the trouble was. <laughs> I want to know what kind of trouble. <laughs> you don't want to say, you don't have to say. Well, I'm not, I'm pretty sure they were like all drinking or something. So oh. I think that's what it was. Okay. Yeah. Which was, Curious minds want to know. <laughs> yeah, but that's like one of the biggest rules is don't drink at all there. So that, that's why. Okay. Does the program include countries uh, other than Ecuador? Yeah, actually, there's oh, obviously there's Ecuador, Peru, um, there's Panama, um, the Dominican Republic, and Costa Rica. They don't drink. They say. Oh, I didn't catch the question. What was the ask? What was the question? Oh, it was um, what countries the, um, the, the amigos help put participants in, uh, and I said, uh, "No, no Jerry, Jerry was still uh, on the drink. He wanted to know uh, more about the, the. Is it no drinking? Yeah, for all participants. Yeah, hmm. in all countries as well." Yeah, it's just like a huge thing. It's like there's like seven rules you're supposed to follow, um, but that's like one of the top ones that you're not supposed to do at all. So, do they go to France? No, it's just South America. <laughs> oh. Oh, it really? looks like some actual native art. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's a question in the chat uh, from Herman. Um, Herman can ask it himself if he wants to unmute himself. Okay. I, uh, I was wondering what beliefs they had, what tales they would tell about the origin of life or the origin of the earth the origin of their civilization, of humanity, you know, what's their story? Um, well, they all, you know, they all went to church, so they were all, they were either Catholic or, um, I forget the other one. There was one. What about Native American, Native stories themselves, pre-Catholic? We know they, about the Catholic story. We, yeah, uh, I didn't really, they wouldn't, I don't know, they most, most of them just were, you know, okay. You know, strictly Catholic. I don't. They never really said anything about their past. You know, they don't have any like old stories about like you know descendants or anything. Uh, that's all I know is that they went to church. And, you know. Okay. Well, 
we know about that part, but I'm interested more in um, nativist uh, stories about their origins. Yeah, I don't really know. So was any of it part of their daily life? Did they, did they uh, have images? Or did they um, have, oh. have anything that was in their routine that was different than we have here? Um, different kind from meals. Yeah. Also different. Well, let's see. They, I mean, not really. I mean, they woke up, uh, except for like when they woke up really early, they went out and took care of the animals. We came back, gave us breakfast because we woke up like they would wake up at like four, and we would wake up at like six. So, um, <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, and then we would go down to the um, on, if it was Sunday, we would go down to church uh, with them, and then um, but if not, we would go down to school and do the you know the the camps or the educational camps for the kids. Then we come back up, eat lunch then go back down and, uh, you know, have fun with the kids, and then that's it. Um, then we come back and have lunch and dinner, and then that's it. And, 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 and like, work on the project after, after dinner, and then we go again, so. I'm seeing some really interesting artwork behind you on the wall, and I'm wondering if that's from Ecuador or South America. Some no. really nice pictures and hangings. Well, the, the, these uh, these ones right here, we actually made ourselves. That, that's what really? me and my sisters made, yeah. And, Those are um, oh, yeah. Real, um, really good. I'm not sure if I can. No, I can't really get that one. How about the red one? Oh, the red I'm, one. I'm pretty sure that's from, that's my mom's. I think it's from Paraguay. Oh, it's from, oh, it's from Panama. Sorry, my oh. dad just corrected me, but that's... And then there's, we have a really couple, few really good paintings. I was not sure if I could really grab it, but there's a, maybe I can point my camera for you. But there's that, I don't know if you can see. Oh, yes, I can. Oh, yeah. There's some really cool stuff back there. Nice. And then, yeah, and then there's this right there, this kind of loom right here. Like a can, weaving? Is it a weaving? Yeah, I think it's a weaving, and that's, I think, Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. So, is it wool? I'm, yeah, pretty sure it's from the, Yeah. Yeah, wow. it has to be. Very nice. Thank you. I, I would like to add uh, something else. Uh, I, I neglected to uh, mention that your older sisters were also in our program. And uh, the whole family was really remarkable, and we appreciated them. Yeah, I'll let them know. Yeah. One thing I may, uh, if um, I don't have to leave to get it, but um, I want to show you it's this really cool um, jacket that I got from Ecuador. And it'll, it'll be right back. It's like, it'll be, it's, it'll be like five seconds. So. Yeah. Ecuadorian food. She wanted to share it. So. I was going to comment, as long as I'm, I'm he's, he's away, I was going to comment that, that someone asked about whether it's the same as, as Keshwa, Q-U-E-C-H-W-A, U-A, excuse me. And I assume it is because I've, I've seen even the linguistics have different spellings for it, K-E-S-H-W-A, and, and I assume this K-I-C-H-W-A is the same. Also, I, it seems to me I remember that the language generally has only four vowels anyway. It's going to distinguish between an E and an I, but I might be wrong there. This is the jacket that um, I got in Ecuador, and I really like it. It's I think it's made from it's made from alpaca fur, and it you know you can see the really cool oh, okay. patterns. So it's really and it's really nice, and I bought it there in one of the markets. So yeah, is is there any industry there other than farming? I mean, do they do they do they weave or? Uh, Oh yeah, a ton, yeah. I mean, there's, yeah. One of the big industries is is these jackets, right? They, mm -hmm. um, that's like if you we went to the market sometimes, and that was like one of the most popular things that were there, right? Was these jackets, and there was like a ton of like different stands with with like similar designs, right? 
and stuff like that. Um, and then there were the, um, let's see what else there was. There was, um, there was a lot of food. Obviously, there's food, but there was like, um, I don't know. There was like a bunch of people that think they were growing watermelons too. It was another big thing. And um, what else? Um, trying to think. There's a lot of shoes too. They, um, I'm not sure. Um, they, I think they, they were shoes too. What, yeah. Do you have an idea what the population of the town was? Um, the my community or the yeah. town? Oh, my community. Well, both, I guess. Oh, uh, my community was um, 400 people. So it was really, you know, everybody knew each other and stuff like that. So, uh, and then the, the, I'm not really sure about the uh, Guamote, the town where the, um, where, where the fair was, but that was a pretty big town. It was, mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure, like, I mean, in the thousands, though. Was it within walking distance of the village? Uh, no, we had to take a, um, um, a truck. They called it camioneta, right? It's a pickup truck with like a canopy on the back of it, and then you just hop in the back of the thing, like in the, in, you know, in the, what do you call the back of the pickup truck, and then you just sit on the edge and then go, and they would like take you to the uh, town or city. Oil. Mm -hmm. The altitude of the community and and the town. Oh, um, they were both around. Not, well, I mean, the the town was our lower elevation. It was like something like. I'm, I'm pretty sure our our well our community was at like fourteen thousand. I'm not sure. The, it was really really Did high. Um, it was really. And then my uh, the, the town was. Uh, Low, I think a few hundred feet lower than that. So, I don't know. How long did it take you to get used to the lack of oxygen? Um, it took quite a while. Um, you know, but um, probably took about a week. Everybody was, when we got there, everybody was like panting when we were like trying to get enough air in the airport. I remember a few people fainted too because of the lack of oxygen or there, or like, you know, the thinner air. And then by the time we, um, we we got like really used to it, and then by the time we landed back in Houston, everybody was like taking massive like you know breaths of air, and then you, you obviously like because it was a lot thicker here. He's like, wait, we don't need to take that thick of breath. So he's like trying to adjust back to the you know lower altitude. If you went back, what kind of presents would, would be popular? Like, wh what kind of things do the kids ask for or you know, like if you went back there on a trip and you wanted to bring some little presents along, what would you bring? Uh, definitely a lot of like books. Like I, uh, one of the presents I actually got him a present for my host brothers. It was a illustrated version of Harry Potter in Spanish. <laughs> so, and uh, yeah, and then like also got him a few soccer balls. So I don't know stuff like that. A lot of uh, illustrated books in Spanish, um, and. Um, you know, a few, like, suffer sports, maybe, like, a football or, like, cones and stuff like that. Uh, but, yeah, so, you know, they were really into, like, sports and stuff. So, you know, they also like volleyball, so maybe a, another volleyball. Because a lot of – they sometimes you use a soccer ball for volleyball, which really hurt. So, yeah. Were there any, any – um, is there any, any literature in the native language? I imagine that the books are in Spanish. Um, well, at church, the entire church service was in Quechua. Uh -huh. Did you so, write it out? Uh, well, I mean, they had a book that uh -huh. they were reading out of. Um, so, yeah. That's... Was there, a, was there a local newspaper? Um, no, there wasn't. There, I mean, not really. Um, I mean, everybody really knew what was going on in the community. It was really small, so it's like if, if something happened, like 30 minutes later, the entire community would know about it, right? I think on, on visitors to how you want to the public. Yeah, well, um, the, well, one funny thing was my, um, my first host mom, um, she actually was, um, she was the treasurer of the, of the, the community. And whenever there was this huge meeting, or like a town meeting, right, 
she would literally just go outside, like to the like almost to the edge of a cliff. Well, not a cliff, just a really steep hill, um, and yell. It was a town meeting. She would just yell it, and then she would just walk down to the town meeting, and everybody would be there because she yelled it. So, yeah. <laughs> a town crier. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, what were the uh, daytime, what, what were the uh, temperatures, typical t temperatures while you were there? Um, it was really, really cold. Like, at night, I had to wear, obviously I was wearing a shirt, a jacket, another jacket, and then a big, uh, a big uh, warm, uh, uh, what do we call it, a winter vest or a winter coat, and then I would be warm. Right, and then and the days it would get like pretty hot. Like I would get sunburn. Um, right, so it was like at, in the like in the day I would just wear I could wear like a t shirt. At, at night it would drop like it would get really cold. Right, so I would have to wear all this stuff and then go in my sleeping bag and then I'll be really warm. So yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. 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 Were there? What were the? Uh, you said you said they raised watermelons. Were there other commercial uh, uh, crops? Uh, definitely potatoes. Um, I think they yeah, also think so. they also grew. Uh, I'm pretty sure they grew carrots. Um, and I'm trying to think what else. I'm pretty sure their their main thing was potatoes. They would grow sometimes, um, not for commerce, they would just grow grass for, um, for what do you call it, uh, for the cows, but that's it. It was like, it was literally like the, almost all of it was potatoes. Uh, and then they would buy rice from like the, the town uh, nearby, the and then uh, they also went into eggs, right? They would sell eggs, uh, the eggs that their chickens had, um, and then they would also sell them, sell them in, so. So were there fruits and vegetables uh, besides potatoes? Well, yeah, they um, but they mostly got those from uh, from the town, right? They would get um, uh, they would get mangoes uh, and um, I'm pretty sure mangoes and uh, bananas. So, mm. did um any people there use coca leaves to help them with the altitude? Coca. Chewing coca? No, no. Although that is, remember at the uh, equator, we saw that they have. Uh, they showed they showed us how like um, chocolate was made, right? So they had like cocoa leaves, and um, um, they showed like, oh, this is how we like take out the, you know. That's all I really. They, they didn't like chew on cocoa or anything. They had, um, they did. I one time got a headache, and I don't know what kind of. Um, leaf my host mother used, but she like rolled something up in a warm towel, you know, like a towel with like warm and soaked it in warm water, and then put it on my head, and then uh, told me to light out. So I'm not sure what kind of leaf she used, but yeah. Uh huh. Okay, because yeah. No. I believe you said you would like to go, would be, like to participate in the program again? Um, I mean, I, if I could, I would. I mean, not saying that I can't, but I, um, I just feel like I don't really have time anymore to do it. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm getting ready, you know, obviously to start doing, um, um, you know, applying for college, and then uh, I really want to get a job somewhere. Uh, so, I don't know, I don't really, and I kind of want to, you know, work through next summer, you know, hopefully everything with the whole coronavirus is cleared out by then. Um, or, like, you know, you know, recovered a little bit from it, but, um, yeah, so I don't know, probably not, and I want to go also visit a lot of colleges, so I don't think I'll really have time to go again, um, 
but definitely on my own or with my partner uh, a few years in the future, I'll be able to go back. So, so you graduated from high school this, this is past, uh, just recently. No, um, I um, have one more year. I'm, I just, I'm a senior now, so I'll be, oh, applying okay. for, I'll be applying for college in my first few months in, uh, in school, and then, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Purdue, an engineering program, or? Well, so yeah. You want to fly training, but it would be more than that, I assume. Well, yeah, but, well, I mean, they have a pilot program there, so.